We have so many choices on what to buy. In fact, there are hundreds of thousands of items available at the store alone. Not to mention online shopping, where we have infinite choices at our fingertips. But it seems like we're all wanting to buy the same things, following the same trends. Trends have always been around. They evolve over time and sometimes even come back around. But now, because of the algorithm, we see the same things over and over again. Same clothes, style of decor, music, restaurants, and even places to vacation. The top 10 choices are organized nicely for you on your homepage, and I think it's becoming more tempting than ever. The thing with trends is that if you don't participate, you might feel left out or feel like you're not staying culturally relevant. Might leave you wondering, will that thing actually make my life better in some way? It's kind of difficult not to feel that when a majority says that this thing will change your life. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with following trends or loving trends. And I also don't think that there's anything wrong with sharing something you love online. Being a content creator myself, I love sharing companies and brands and products that I genuinely love. But when that gets multiplied by the crazy pace of our modern world, I can't help but think that it's contributing to this perpetual circle of hyper-consumerism. I think more than ever, we need to slow down and ask ourselves, are the things that we're buying really adding value to our lives? And how do we choose what's right for us when we have so many choices to choose from? Around 2016, when minimalism was trending, I remember a lot of people decluttered their stuff just to replace it with the things that fit the minimalism aesthetic. The fancy coffee maker, an Apple laptop, maybe a Kindle, and a monochromatic wardrobe. It's so ironic because minimalism is supposed to be about simplifying and becoming intentional about the stuff that you buy. So it should have personalized our homes, but it did quite the opposite and made it all the same. I think we can save a lot of money and time when we realize that we can't just swipe a credit card to achieve a certain lifestyle. We can wear the right clothes, we can wear the right brands and have the right items. And this might create an illusion for everyone else. But what is the point if we're just pretending on the inside? In fact, I feel like adapting to a new lifestyle, it really shouldn't cost you anything, especially in the beginning. We can always work with what we have, but what you will need is a lot of time to reflect, to make effort, to make those little changes. And I feel like when we invest those things into it, we won't be so quick to just switch over to the next lifestyle that's trending on social media. When I was trying to cut back from my impulse purchases, I came up with a series of questions that I would ask myself before I bought anything. And one of the most powerful questions that I still ask myself today before I buy is, is this in alignment with my values and my vision? If you don't know your financial values, I think it's essential to establish that first, because that will be the guideline to all of your purchases. So think about what brings you real joy and fulfillment. What are your non-negotiables that you're willing to spend money on? What kind of purchases bring you long lasting value? And you might not have the right answers right away, but I do feel like it will get more clear when you dwell on them. And when it does become really solid, I feel like it's gonna become so much easier to separate what you truly need versus what everyone else tells you. I feel like we all know that we shouldn't go grocery shopping without having a specific list. And I feel like we kind of need to do the same thing with online browsing because nowadays everything seems like an ad. I talked about having a wish list so many times on this channel because it's simple and it works. When you're scrolling and you feel the urge to buy something, write it down on a list and give yourself time to think about it. Most of the time, I end up crossing it off because I realize that I actually don't need it. But whatever remains on there, 
they become my only priorities. So even if I come across the cutest high-waisted denim or the newest trending vlogging camera, those trends become totally irrelevant to me. Having the wish list as a system, it's really the ultimate filter for me and it has saved me so much money, so much time and energy from making the wrong choices, from buying into these trends that will come and go. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like social media really has changed. It was a place where you could really see glimpses of everyone's uniqueness. But now it seems like everyone is trying to be the same and the social media kind of rewards them for this. It's kind of become a game of who can be the better replica of the current trend. I think now more than ever, we need to take the time to develop our own unique taste. So unplug for a while, take yourself to a museum and find art that really interests you. Pick up a book of a different genre than the one that you always pick. Try a different cuisine and see how you like it. Lean into what grabs your attention and what sparks joy and curiosity. This is where you might find bits and pieces of yourself again. I hope that you don't just go with what's been selected for you, but I hope that you are the one selecting. You are the one curating your life. And I feel like life is gonna be so much more interesting that way. I noticed that big companies are also playing into these social media trends. I went to the store the other day and at the very entrance of the store, I saw a display of like TikTok's most recommended books, Instagram viral skincare. And while this might be a very smart business move on their part, as a consumer, it's just becoming redundant and it's really exhausting. I personally love and miss going into these boutiques where it felt like going into someone's home. There would be really cool looking furniture and these books and maps and handmade jewelry. Every piece came with like a unique story and it just really showed off the owner's taste. I feel like it is really rare to come across these cool boutiques nowadays, but I feel like we can take that same concept and bring it into our own spaces. Instead of filling up your home with the trendiest, prettiest stuff, I think it's much more meaningful to carefully handpick the unique pieces that reflect your personal taste. After all, home is where we spend most of our time, so wouldn't we want to be surrounded by the things that capture our essence? I think one of the easiest ways to do this is to shop secondhand at antique stores or vintage stores because it's almost guaranteed that we will find something unusual but capture our quirkiness at the same time. I hope that you celebrate your uniqueness. That is one trend that will not go out of style, as cheesy as it sounds. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I'll talk to you really soon.